Uncle Joe? Uncle Joe? Mickey. I'm looking for my saw. Oh, is that it? Well, if that don't beat the bugs biting. These all the shelves that you sawed for the library car? Okay. I've been suffering something terrible with lumbago. Oh, that's too bad. Why don't you dunk yourself in a hot bath? That's a good idea. After you finish sawing the shelves. <laughs> Kate, it's a waste of time starting the library in the baggage car of the train. Well, I don't consider it a waste of time making it easy for school children of this valley to get books. Well, when I was a boy, I walked 10 miles to the library. The last time I heard that story, it was five miles. Oh. Well, that time I took a shortcut. And the time before, it was two miles. You know something? Your memory's getting shorter and the walk's getting longer. Well, it don't make no difference how far I walk. The trouble of the kids today is we pamper them too much. No wonder so few of them grow up to be president. <laughs> oh, Uncle Joe, if you have any complaints, you tell them to Miss Marsh tonight at supper. Who's Miss Marsh? The lady that's going to be running the library train. Oh, thanks. I'll eat in my room. I don't intend eating supper with any frumpy, skinny old maid of a librarian. Uh, excuse me. Is uh, Mrs. Bradley in? Mrs. Bradley? Oh, okay. She invited me to dinner this evening. I'm Phyllis Marsh. The frumpy, skinny old maid librarian. I beg your pardon? But I'm Miss Bradley's niece, Joe Carson. I knew she's my niece, Joe Carson. I, I'm just taking this upstairs for this sick dog. Uh, she, she's in the kitchen. Uh, tell her to hold dinner for me. I gotta get cleaned up. I've been sewing shells for the library train all day. <laughs> books you'll be putting in the library train, Miss Marsh? Well, Billy Joe, uh, some of the classics like Dickens, Thackeray, Stevenson, and a few of the moderns like uh, Sherwood Anderson, Faulkner, Hemingway. Hemingway? Him and me used to be good friends. You knew Ernest Hemingway? No, this is Harvey Hemingway. He ran the Hooterville Barbershop before Luke Fielding took over. I think they were relatives. Uh, you mean that your Mr. Hemingway was related to Ernest Hemingway? No, no, Harvey was related to Luke. Uh, he gave him a good buy on the barbershop. I hope you're going to have a poetry section, Miss Marsh. Oh, yeah, I love poetry. Who can ever forget them immoral lines? The boy stood on the burning deck, eating peanuts by the peck. Uncle Joe? Huh? That's not exactly poetry. Well, it rhymes. A coffee, Miss Marsh? Oh, yes. Oh, here's one of the old classics us book lovers will never forget. Twas a balmy summer evening, and a goodly crowd was there, which well nigh filled Joe's barroom on the corner by the square. Train's coming! Oh, isn't that the uh, last train into Hooterville? Yeah, luckily it's on time for a change. <laughs> well, if you can uh, tear yourself away, I'll walk you down to the stop. All well, right. Never mind, Kate. I don't mind walking her down. But Uncle Joe, it's very chilly out tonight. What about your lumbago? Lumbago? At my age? Just because Kate has some of the complaints of the elderly, she thinks everybody has. Well, if you're sure it isn't too much trouble, Mr. Carson. Call me Joe. That's his name. <laughs> Thank you for dinner, Mr. Bradley. Good night, Bradley. Marsh. Good property. In your uh, Sunday best suit? Oh, this. Kate, would you believe it if I told you it was the first thing I found handy this morning? No, I wouldn't. You sure got a suspicious nature. <laughs> oh, there's a whistle for the library train. It's making its first run this morning. Oh, it is? Maybe I'll put off a stroll around the property and go down and see how Miss What's-Her-Name's getting along. 
Miss Marsh. Yeah, Miss Marsh. <laughs> Charlie, he brought us some flowers. Oh, ain't that sweet. Joe, I didn't know you cared. I don't. Give me that. Thank you again for the lovely flowers, Mr. Carson. <laughs> Call me Joe, Miss Marsh. I just thought to decorate up the library a little on its first run. Well, that was very, very sweet of you. Thank you. Now, how would you like to take out a library card? Rather take out the librarian. <laughs> <laughs> well, first I'll need some information about you, Mr. Carson. He'd rather take out the librarian. Hey, that's funny. <laughs> now, I know your name and address, but uh, why don't you sit down, Mr. Carson? Um, what is your occupation? Oh, uh, the general manager of the Shady Rest Hotel chain. Oh, are there more Shady Rest Hotels? Uh... Not yet. We got about a dozen in the blueprint stage. Planning a real big one in Honolulu. Uh, that's right near Hawaii. How does he know? He ain't never been no further than the county seat. Now, uh, what is your age? Age? Mm -hmm. How old do you think I am? Well, uh, I'm not a very good judge of ages, Mr. Carson. Well, I'm, uh... 31. <laughs> prematurely gray due to a terrible siege of measles when a child. It's prematurely gray due to a terrible siege of old age. 31. Well, uh, that's all I'll need. Um, you can take some books out now if you like. Oh, good. I've just been waiting for this. Well, here's one that looks like a pretty good story. Let's see. Basic elements of advanced thermodynamics. <laughs> the basic elements of advanced thermodynamics. Hey, Uncle Joe, I didn't know you were interested in thermodynamics. Just the advanced part. <laughs> Zen Buddhism, self-taught. It's about a fellow named Zen Buddhism, taught himself. <laughs> Uncle Joe, these are more books than you've read in your whole life. That's because the library train's so handy. When I was a boy, I had to walk 40 miles for a book. I thought you told Miss Marsh it was only 25 miles. Miss Marsh? Is that her name? <laughs> Miss Marsh. Good morning. Brought these back for a refill. My goodness, Mr. Carson, you've read all those already? Or nothing to it. I had the power reading course at the Hooterville Night School. I can go about ten pages at a clip. Really? Miss Marsh? Yes. Do you have anything on thermodynamics? Well, you're certainly in luck. Mr. Carson just brought one back. Oh. Now, here, kid. Best book on the subject I ever read. What does it say about heat rediffusion? Hey. Well, if I told you everything that's in the book, what good would it do you to read it? It's in the book. It's in the book. I could have told him in a minute. But it's better to let them struggle through it themselves. Oh, I agree. Miss Marsh? Yes. Do you have any books on fishing? I think so. Do you like fishing? I sure do. Miss Marsh, would you let me take you fishing sometime? Well, I think that would be very nice. Hey, if you like fishing, let me take you. I asked her first. Get back to your books, Sonny. <laughs> I'll pick you up right after the library run tomorrow. But I'll say no I, more. I, and if you got yeah. any fishing boots, bring them. Toodaloo. Morgan's Creek. I'm not walking too fast for you, am I? Oh, no, no. I'll keep up. <laughs> Mr. Carson, are you all right? 
course I'm all right. Why? Well, your uh, insect propellant is running. <laughs> oh, yeah, my insect repellent. You know, I wouldn't think of taking a step into mosquito territory without my old black magic. <laughs> Oh, hi, Kate. I'm on the way to play checkers with Sam Drucker. In those clothes? Well, you never know who you're going to meet. No. Like an old fishing buddy. Oh, I don't think Charlie and Floyd's going to be there. Oh, I wasn't thinking about them. I was thinking of a younger old fishing buddy. Like who? Like, uh, you know, Miss What's Her Name? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, if I run into her, I'll give you a regard. I could tell her. Coolidge isn't running this year. <laughs> Joe, how much longer are you going to pace around out here waiting for that girl? She's only 30 minutes late. If you don't show up in another two hours, I'm leaving. I never saw a man lose his head in a more hopeless cause. Sam, you just mind your pickle barrel. Leave the romance to me. I'll bring you out a chair around 10.30, if your legs ain't give out before then. <laughs> He's such a sweet old man, and he's been so nice to me. Well, for crying out loud, are we engaged or aren't we? Well, of course we are, darling, but, well, I, I didn't expect you down here this weekend, and I just can't hurt his feelings. Well, he built that whole library in a cannonball for me. Well, I... Oh, come on, it, it won't take very long. Look, I I'll call you at the rooming house just as soon as I get back, okay? Okay. <laughs> Oh, hi. I'm, uh, I'm sorry that I'm so late. Oh, it's perfectly all right. I just got here myself. <laughs> well, something unexpected has come up, and, uh, well, I'm afraid that I won't be able to spend too much time with you. Oh. Well, why don't we go in and wet our whistles anyway? <laughs> Good. A treat's on me. <laughs> There's a cooler right over there. Uh. Well, let's see. Uh, see, there's ginger ale, birch beer, cherry. Yo, when you close the cooler, all the ice is melting. As soon as we pick our sodas, these local storekeepers. There's root beer, lime, lemon, strawberry, cream. Oh, strawberry, that, that'll be fine. I like strawberry, too. <laughs> you open those, please, for our storekeeper. You drinking strawberry, Joe? You know it's murder on your gallbladder. Well, I want medical advice. I'll go to the vet. <laughs> All right, it's your gallbladder. <laughs> How do you like our town, Miss Marsh? Oh, I think it's charming. Ain't changed a bit in 50 years, has it, Joe? I wouldn't know. I was just a little boy when you got here. <laughs> you were just... Uh, straws, please, storekeeper. <laughs> you may think Hooterville's charming, but it sure don't hold a candle to Honolulu. Oh, you've been there? Well, not yet, but I'm going to manage the Honolulu Shady Rest as soon as it's built. Oh. And Honolulu is a wonderful place for a honeymoon. Mr. Carson, are you planning on getting married? Oh, I might just pop the question any minute. You just might pop your gallbladder drinking this stuff. <laughs> oh, Sam, you're always worrying about me, just like my father. In fact, he's old enough to be my father. Old How enough. much are these? That'll be ten cents, Sonny, and you don't have to give me a tip. <laughs> Can I talk to you for a minute, Sam? Would you excuse us, please? Yes, yes. I got a hole in my pocket. Not as big as the one you got in your head. <laughs> Put the dime on my account. You got no account. In fact, you are no account. I'm just trying to make a good impression. Well, you're not getting through to me at all. Mr. Carson, did you lose this dime? Oh, 
Yeah. There you are, I'm a good man. If I need anything else, I'll call you. <laughs> Pardon me for the interruption. Old Sam here is always asking me for financial advice. <laughs> uh, shall we drink these outside where the flies aren't so bad? <laughs> Thank you for a very pleasant evening, Mr. Carson. Good night. Miss Marsh. Yes, Mr. Carson? I wonder if you... <laughs> Forget it. Miss Marsh. You notice the moon? Oh, yes, it's beautiful. You know what a moon like that means? No. Well, it means, uh, it means it ain't, ain't gonna rain tomorrow. Well, that's good to know. Right. Mr. Carson. but don't shoot. Okay. Uncle Joe, I never thought the day would come when I'd have to wait up for you. When are you going to stop treating me like a little kid? When you stop acting like one. Uncle Joe, you're too old for this sort of thing. Old? I'm only 31. 31? If you don't believe it, just look at my library card. <laughs> Strawberry soda. Strawberry soda. No wonder he was up with his gallbladder all night. <laughs> There's no fool like an old fool. And he's one of the oldest fools there ain't one like. <laughs> you know where he went? Into Pixley to buy her a bottle of French toilet water. Oh, hi, Miss Marsh. Mrs. Bradley. Oh, I'm so glad to see you here because I've wanted to have a talk with you. Yes, and I think I know what about. Mrs. Bradley, I'd like to present my fiancé, Hal Jackson. Well, I'm very pleased. Fiancé? That's right. Phyllis and I have been engaged for nearly six months. And Uncle Joe doesn't know about it. I haven't had the heart to tell him. Well, somebody ought to tell him or he's going to be stuck with a bottle of French toilet water. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Bradley, what are we going to do? He's such a sweet old gentleman. Yes, well, we'll just have to find a way to let him down easy. <laughs> go through with this. We have to, especially since it was your idea. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that nincompoop in there with your mother? Oh, Uncle Joe, isn't it exciting? He came over to fix the well pump this morning, and Mom took one look at him and just flipped. Is she out of her mind? Well, that boy's at least, well, he's a lot younger than she is. Oh, but when you're in love, what difference does age make? Well, it don't make no difference if you're a man, but with a woman, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Would you mind helping the girls with the dishes tonight? I got a date. <laughs> with that juvenile delinquent? If you're referring to my steady beau, Hal Jackson, yes. So would you mind helping out in the kitchen? I gotta get dressed. I can't. I've got a date, too. And would you mind letting me have the bathroom first? <laughs> <laughs> Your mind? They 
wouldn't even let you in a swimming pool wearing a dress that tight. Oh, I wouldn't say that. I think Billy Joe's dress looks very nice on me. You wouldn't even let Billy Joe wear that dress. Oh, Joe, it doesn't matter what you think, as long as Hal likes it. Hal. At his age, he ought to be home working on his hot rod. <laughs> Hiya, baby doll. Say, you look terrific. Hal. <laughs> Oh, what a night, what a night. You know, that old moon's hanging up there like an invitation to romance. Well, what are we waiting for, honeypot? Let's wiggle on down to Spoon and Rock. You said it, baby. See you later, old tomato. Uh, yeah, old tomato. <laughs> Ain't that the most disgusting sight you ever seen? Oh, I think it's cute. Cute? Your mother leaping around out there in the moonlight with that... Adolescent? Mom's old enough to know her own mind. Hey, you better get going. You're gonna be late for your date. I ain't going. Somebody with a mature head on their shoulders got to keep an eye on your mother. <laughs> Here he comes. You ready? Ready. Sheer heaven. Oh, Kate, my love, I want to be here with you forever. And I want to be here forever with you, too. Hold me tight. Oh, oh Kate, I never want to let you go. And I never want to let you go, either. Let's forget everything and run away to, to Mexico. Tahiti. Honolulu. Unhand that woman. If anybody's going to Honolulu, it's going to be me. My Uncle Joe, I thought you were in Hooterville. Well, it's lucky for you I weren't stand back, woman. Get up. I'm going to thrash you, you young whippersnapper, within an inch of your life. <laughs> well, we could control your temper, Uncle Joe. Don't hurt him. Let, let's talk it over. Talk let's... it over, my foot. Sick him. Sick him. <laughs> Not me, stupid. Him. <laughs> you, Halsey Walsey? No, it's me, Josie Wosey. You can stop that juvenile love talk. You're still Kate Bradley and the mother of three. My Uncle Joe, what's come over you? Sit down, Kate. I want to talk to you. What I say, you ain't gonna like. What? This morning, I introduced that great lover of yours to one of the most fickle girls I've ever met. Phyllis Marsh? Well, why would you ever introduce her to Hal? You were making such a fool of yourself over him. To save you, I sacrificed the greatest love a man ever had. <laughs> Kate, it was sickening. They was a kissing each other before I'd finished the introduction. <laughs> it's gonna hurt for a while, but it was the only way I could figure out to bring you to your senses. Thank you, Uncle Joe. Making such a great sacrifice just to save me from my foolishness. That's okay, Kate. Here. Maybe this will help console you. Oh. Oh. Just what I've always wanted. A bottle of French toilet water. <laughs> Junction. This has been a Filmways presentation.